When Premiere Pro decided to crash three times in a row during my last editing session, I decided it was finally time for a change. There had to be a better way. Not only do I want to get away from this incredibly unstable software, but more importantly, I don't want to pay $70 per month for a bunch of crappy software as soon as my student discount ends. So I started to look for alternatives. Of course, there are plenty of different video editing tools out there, but I was always intrigued by the idea of creating videos with code. Like any other programmer, I'm obsessed with automating things, even if that means that it will take much longer than just doing the work manually. That's why I decided to create this video that you're watching right now completely with code. But how does it work? Well, I had no idea either, so I went onto GitHub and searched for video creation libraries. The most popular one is Manem. It is a library created by the popular YouTuber 3 blue one brown who created it for his own mathematical YouTube videos. It is therefore made for creating mathematical animations. Manem looks awesome and even though I'm not creating mathematical videos, I would have tried it out immediately if it wasn't for the fact that it is written in Python. As a proud member of the Church of Curly Braces, I've sworn to protect those holy symbols at all costs. So if I had the power to erase Python from the history of humanity, I wouldn't hesitate for a second. In the interest of my mental health, I will not use Manim, but I'm sure it's great if you're willing to sacrifice your sanity. The second tool I found is Remotion. It is based on React and uses a headless browser to render the video, which means that a lot of existing CSS features and libraries work out of the box. While it is at least possible to create a YouTube intro with Remotion, as shown in the Fireship video that I stole this video title from, the primary use case is creating data-driven videos. Think for example data visualization or animated statistics. But after doing some more research, I found another tool that looks like a much better fit for my use case. Motion Canvas is a TypeScript library for creating animated videos. It was created by a game dev YouTuber called Artificial, who also wrote it for creating his own YouTube videos. The main difference between Remotion and Motion Canvas is how the animation timeline is controlled. With Remotion, everything that is happening is based on the current frame number that you can access with the use current frame function. If for example you wanted to move an element to the right, you would just increase its x coordinate with the current frame number. This works really well as long as you know exactly what is happening at any given point in the video. But as soon as you start to move stuff around, it can get really messy. Unfortunately, my video creation process is already quite messy. I add, remove and change stuff all the time during editing. So this might not be the best fit for me. Motion Canvas has a very different approach. Instead of calculating everything based on the frame number, you can simply write what you want to happen in sequential order. For example, we can just move an object to a certain position, wait for a second and then move it back afterwards. It is much more obvious what is happening, especially when we compare it to a Remotion component that would do the same animation. Eventually, I decided to pass on Remotion. Every animation that you've seen so far and every animation that you will see later in this video is written with Motion Canvas. Let me show you how it works. There are five basic concepts that Motion Canvas uses. As soon as you understand those concepts, you can do pretty much anything with Motion Canvas. The first of them is Scenes. After you create a new Motion Canvas project with an npm command, you will have a new project with one scene. To see what the scene currently looks like, you can start up the built-in editor interface, which acts more like a preview with limited editing capabilities, but more on that later. Similar to a DOM tree, you can add nodes to the scene and nest them into each other. And just like in React, you can use JSX to make this node tree a little bit more readable. But don't worry, you do not need any React knowledge to use Motion Canvas. JSX is just a small abstraction layer that allows you to write nodes in XML-like syntax directly in your JavaScript code. If you don't like that, you can just create instances of the nodes, nest them into each other and add them to the scene. Talking about nodes, there are a ton of them already available. Texts, circles, rectangles, images, videos and even a ready to use code component that you've seen quite a few times at this point. And if those are not enough, you can easily create your own nodes with custom looks and functionality. You might or might not have noticed that this node is centered in our scene, which is actually the default. But let's take a closer look at how positioning works in Motion Canvas. The origin of every scene is in the center, which might be a little confusing at first, but it's also very convenient when you just want to add a single element to the scene. Other than that, the position of an element is always relative to its parent and it uses a coordinate system where increasing the x value will move it to the right and increasing the y value will move it down.
down, so it's similar to CSS and HTML. But you don't have to position every element manually. Even though Motion Canvas does not support CSS directly, it has a layout feature that implements a lot of Flexbox features, which makes it easy to position multiple elements in a scene. To create a new layout route, we can set the layout property on most of the basic nodes provided by Motion Canvas. Those nodes extend the layout node in the background. Similar to Flexbox, you can now modify the vertical alignment, horizontal alignment, gaps between the elements and the direction of the element flow, making it a powerful tool that saved me a lot of time while creating this video. Now that we have our nodes in our scene and know how to position them, how do we actually make them move? Let's take a look at how animations work. You might have seen this yield keyword in some of the earlier code snippets. Motion Canvas uses a concept called generators under the hood, and I had honestly no idea that this existed in JavaScript. While I might be guilty of having copied and pasted some code in other languages that uses generators, I never really cared enough to understand the concept. But it's actually really cool and it makes a lot of sense for something like video generation. So let's do a quick crash course, just in case you have the same skill issues as me. Generators are special functions with a star behind the function keyword. Inside of those generator functions, you can use the yield keyword which acts similar to a return, in the way that it stops the function from executing and returns a value. But unlike regular functions, it is possible to continue the execution by calling the next function on the generator. For that reason, they are also known as lazy iterators, because once you create a generator object, you can call its next function and it will continue the execution of the generator until the next yield. And it is also possible to add code between the yield statements, which is only executed when the next function function is called. Now Motion Canvas uses one yield for every frame rendered, so it will apply the changes between two frames between the two yield statements. That might sound a little tedious, but Motion Canvas handles all of that under the hood, and the functions that you will use for animating objects are really straightforward. To move an object, we can just write .position.x and call it with the position that we want to move it to and the duration of the animation in seconds. So this will move the circle to a position of 300 over the span of one second. As a third argument, we can pass an easing function to make the animation smooth. The properties that you are able to animate will depend on the node that you are using, and most of the properties are already ready to be animated. But if you want to add your own animated attributes, you can do that as well, using signals. All those animations we looked at so far use signals under the hood. It's a way to tell a node that something will change over time. The position of an element is a signal just like its opacity or scale. But you can also add your own signals to custom nodes. Let's take this emoji as an example. We can make a new custom node by extending the motion canvas node. Now that we have our own node, let's add a new signal called silliness and make the length of the tongue of the emoji depend on that silliness signal. After adding it to our scene, we can animate the silliness just like any other regular signal. So let's animate our emoji to a silliness of 100 over the span of one second. When we want to use signals in the scene directly instead of in a custom node, we can do that by using the create signal function. It will create a new signal object that for example stores the radius of a circle. We can now use this signal to calculate the area of the circle based on the radius. This is really helpful when you for example want to show the area on the screen, like it is the case here. Changing the signal of the radius now will update the area along with it. But sometimes we just want our animation to do nothing at all. To achieve that we can use wait for to make the scene idle for a bit between animations. But synchronizing audio and video just by using animation durations and wait for would be tedious. This is why Motion Canvas has a special feature for synchronizing audio with video. Arguably the most unique Motion Canvas feature is time events. Instead of using wait for with a fixed value in seconds, you can use wait until to specify a custom event. This event then appears completely automatically in your Motion Canvas editor and it can be moved around directly in the editor interface. It makes synchronizing audio and video a lot easier, but there are a few things to look out for. When you move around a time event, it will also move all of the time events after it. A lot of the times, for example, when you cut out a part of your voiceover, this is what you want. But if you want to only change one time event without changing all the ones after that, you have to press the shift key while moving it around. Also, make sure that there are no time events directly after each other in your code, because it might break stuff in the editor. Another neat feature of time events is that you can access the duration of a time event via the use duration function. This is especially helpful when you want to create an animation that lasts until the next time event. Now that you know how to work with Motion Canvas, 
what was the process like creating this video? First off, I wanna give a big shout out to Artificial, the creator of Motion Canvas, who did not only do a great job making this library, but also documenting it. The documentation has a lot of examples and is easy to follow, making it a perfect starting point for anyone interested in working with Motion Canvas. When I started out, I was a little worried about the performance aspects, especially for bigger projects, as Motion Canvas is just using an HTML canvas and therefore web technology. Scrubbing on the timeline is pretty Pretty smooth for the most part and overall it was a much more responsive experience than working with Premiere Pro and After Effects. So that's a clear win for web technologies yet again. Another advantage over my previous workflow is that I can actually work on just one screen. With Premiere Pro and After Effects I pretty much always had Premiere Pro on one screen and After Effects on the other one. But with Motion Canvas a lot of the time I just ended up opening a browser preview inside of Cursor to show the editor, which worked surprisingly well in such a small preview window. Because of the way Motion Canvas handles synchronization between audio and video, it also allows me to have a completely different workflow. Usually I have to record the voiceover before I start editing the video. But with Motion Canvas, I can just start programming my animations, adopt them as I go along and do the voiceover at the end. Which is a real time saver, because more often than not I ended up re-recording voiceovers just because I realized I wanted to change something during the editing process. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Certain things take a lot more time than just doing them in traditional editing software. Manually positioning objects or zoom animations can be a real pain, as you need to change the value over and over again in the code until the object is where you want it to be. The editor interface does not have any drag and drop functionality to modify the position of an element, which makes sense as everything is defined in code, but it can still be very tedious. And while the community is obviously not as big as the one of Premiere Pro or After Effects, you can still find a lot of components and common patterns in various GitHub repositories, as well as on the Motion Canvas Discord server. I will also link the source code for this video in the description down below. And if you want to support my other open source work, check out Solid Time, the open source time tracker for your freelance or agency work at solidtime.io. So will I use Motion Canvas for my future videos? Well, I guess you have to subscribe to find out. Also, if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like as it really helps me out. See you in the next video.